Hey everybody, this is Jason Jeffries here. I got Heidi Vandenberg from Channel 27. Um, just wanted to give her a little, we're going to do a little interview. She's going to go over my star chart and talk a little bit, kind of get her name out there. She, uh, seen her on the Leak Project a couple times. I was really amazed with what she was doing. So reached out to her and here we are. So Heidi, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. You needed to say we both have stomping roots and in a similar area too. So Oh yeah, we found out that uh she came she went to college here in the town that I live in and was raised ah. in Frostburg. Yeah. So it was even good old Frostburg. Yeah, more synchronous. <laughs> it was really cool. But uh all right. Yeah. So, Wanna share what what you what you have for us tonight? Yeah, I was just gonna go over your chart with you a little bit. I can't um, thanks for letting me do it. No not a lot of people want their chart done um you know, on air, I guess you could say, especially, you know, a lot of people that have channels, <laughs> but you're kind of like me and it's just, I feel like sometimes when you do do it, people can understand, what's going on here? people can certainly um, relate to you, you know, and it's like, if you're open and honest and you can tell a story and it helps somebody, you know, I think that, and that's kind of how I look at astrology and I like, I don't mind telling people about my life because I feel like you can learn from it and you can make better decisions. And if I didn't find astrology, you know, I always say, who knows where I would be now? I mean, it really helped me through um, a lot of my life and a lot of my challenges and the challenges that I thought I had that, you know, I just thought I was nuts um, or you just feel like you don't fit in. Right. That's kind of how Vedic astrology changed my life. And I never believed astrology because the Western way didn't fit me. Um, and then somehow I sold homes to a bunch of people from India and I had to learn how to sell homes to people from India. And I bought a book on Vatsu and I was reading about it and started talking about signs and that's changed my life. I Googled Indian astrology and I have not turned back. So it's been, I don't know, four or five years now. And, um, I love it. It's my favorite thing to do, but it's not my full-time job, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my hobby and my passion, put it that way. Yeah, that's... What about you? How did you... Why don't you tell us how you got into it, too? <laughs> well, I, I was always into the stars, and like I was saying, I was... Uh, ever since I was a child, I was just fascinated with stars. I remember naming constellations, things like that, and, and just always had a deep interest in the stars, uh... I even wanted to be an astronaut. That was my first thing. People ask kids what they wanted to be. They'd always give them random, you know, I don't know. I was, I want to be an astronaut. And yeah. I, I wanted to feel that weightlessness and be with the stars. But uh, I started to get into astrology a little bit. I just kind of, I was wondering how it worked and how it was like so loosely understood, you know what I mean? With um, basically how it worked and how, they could just put it in a newspaper like that, essentially. And then I started to learn about the procession of the equinox and the different kinds of astrologies. And I seen uh, through computer software just how these alignments and how everything's essentially vibration and frequency anyways, these energies, you know, could definitely affect somebody at their moment of birth and all throughout their life. So it started to actually scientifically make sense to me, like actually – not be like woo woo you know like wow yeah right. right let's just say that you and i both don't have charts that we're just going to believe anything i mean it's we have to see and when we do see it and we can prove it and you know we're like fact checkers i mean the, i still question it every day i mean there's not a question in my mind like i'm never always testing it that's why i ask everybody i know what time they're born just to see <laughs> yeah I really do well i did, I, I noticed that that aspect like of the the sun chart was like i said it was almost like they were giving people it was a lost art i'll say that because it was almost through the last procession you know it was it's like they had it right a couple thousand years ago or a thousand years ago but it's like they lost the art they didn't it's a clock that's always counting you know and they right. reset the clock almost and i noticed that and that's what really clicked with me and uh when i well, see well and you know that's that's funny that you said that's like the one thing I've I mean I've never really understood that whole thing I'm not um into the I'm not a book person at all so I'm more of a salesperson slash test it out and see if it works and learn through memorization so I literally I tried it western way too and it just 
never clicked ever. And something was always off. And that's why I started reading charts through these nakshatras and they're these, they're fixed stars. They are stars. Like if you put the star chart up, you can see Barini is in the sky, right? And you have three planets there. So you can see them in the zodiac and it just always made sense to me. So I just kind of learned how to do it this way. Um, I use the sidereal calculations. They never fail. I mean, it's just, it's more of a dark side. I, I think you, you learn like the, I feel like Western astrology is more glitter, more positive. It's like more, Oh, this is blah, blah, blah. Like Vedic astrology is more doom and gloom. But I mean, personally for me, I needed to hear the doom and gloom to believe it, to know that it was true, you know? Yeah. They, they don't sugarcoat it. They don't glitter it. And they don't tell you what you need to hear. They tell you the truth about these different energies basically and how to influence you. And yes, that really, that's what clicked with me because uh, I, anybody can pick out a strength trait within any one of the 12 Zodiacs and say, yeah, that fits me. That's me. I, I like, you know, I'm that. Right. So right. basically some, uh, yeah, that's how I just knew. I was like, eh, it doesn't seem to fit me. But well, once, you'll like this because it's using the stars, I think, because it's a lot different than zodiac signs, period. I mean, it's this is breaking your your cancer ascendant down to, you know, to the T. So, yeah, you can even um, we can even share screens if you okay. want. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Can you see it? Yeah. All right, so I wrote a lot of notes. I'm a note taker, so you have to, well, this is not you. Sorry, lots of people going on here. All right, so this is your birth chart, and you're pretty familiar with this, right? You know, this is your first house, second house, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right? And this is your 12. So when I look at this overall, um, I'll kind of just go through it, how I would do a reading for somebody, right? All right. Um, you're a Cancer ascendant. I'm curious. Do you have lighter eyes? Uh, blue eyes. Yeah. Blue. Yeah. So a lot of cancers have very. Um, they they tend to have blue eyes. I've noticed a lot of Cancer ascendants or Cancer moons will have blue eyes. Um, cancers can kind of act a little tough around the edges, right? And this is your ascendant is your life path, and this changes every two hours. So it's your life path. It's the way. You know, the world, your life is going to go. It's going to be how you act, your personality, your health. <clears throat> it's also going to be um, how people see you. I like to say it's kind of your mask because it might not be how you think, right? Um, but you're, you have an ascendant, moon sign, and a sun sign. The sun sign is least of importance because it's how many babies were born, you know, within that time frame of it being your sun sign a lot, right? That's like 30, a whole month all the babies in the world. So this really um, breaks it down to the T. So you could actually do twins that were born, you know, 15 seconds apart, 30 seconds apart, 30 minutes apart. Yeah. So it's real, it's way more accurate. Um, all right. So your, your second house here and your second house is family when you're growing up. So early childhood, it's also, um, it's also financial gains and money and savings accounts and um, things like that. So you have moon and K2 there, which no matter what, you're always going to have this, you have your, this karma on finances and family and other people's money, right? So because it's the eighth house and secrets and the eighth house, wherever Rahu and K2 sit. And in Western astrology, they call it the North Node and South Node, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever, wherever K2 and Rahu are sitting, it's your, it's your karma, what you're here to learn and what you're here to achieve, what you're here to let go of and focus on. And you, what you're, the ideal thing is to learn how to balance these two houses, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to, now yours is really heavily influenced because it's with the moon, the way you think that's your moon sign. So your moon sign is you know, basically going to be everything in your life, how you think, how you react to things. And your moon is in um, Leo and it's in the nakshatra Purvafalguni, 
So that's part of Leo. And um, this even breaks down to the potas, which I'm not going to get into all that. But, you know, when you have K2 with anything, it diffuses it. It, it like, makes you not care. So you probably um, run through things. You know, you'll probably go through things and go through situations, and you just kind of feel, in a way, lost or, like, you don't care. One minute you could be upset about something, and then the next minute you can be totally, like, whatever, I don't care, right? You feel like... Does that, set, does that how you feel a lot? Yeah, I can let things that um, don't really matter slide. <laughs> yeah, or it's easy to get over things. Yeah, I have to be able to see you too. It, it's like, it's easy to, um, how do we make this smaller? It's easier to get over things, like once, you, or hold a grudge too, right? Because yeah. day two is your past. So it's going to make you be attached to your past, um, possibly interested in past lives possibly interested in um but it also can make you want to escape because a lot of people that have k2 and moon together you have to be careful with addictions because you can have an addictive personality um because you just you're like trying to get through this crazy life you just you're here to you're here to let go you already know it so it's where whatever k2 will just take things away from you until you figure it out yeah. So you don't care. So you don't care about material things anymore and money and the family drama that you possibly had growing up. He'll just make it worse because you're here to learn how to let go. And wherever Rahu sits, he stirs up the pot, right? So he sits there and just causes problems in the eighth house to make the second house, you know, you'll go back to the second house. So anytime you have a problem, you'll be really introverted. You know, you just want to go and do a cave. I mean, it's also a lot of separation, isolation. It's you like your space. You're going to always want your alone time, no matter what, you know, like you need that for your creativity. You need to be alone a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. But, and then here's the crazy thing about this. It's in Leo. So what's hard is because you have this, like you have this thing in your life that you're supposed to be in the public, right? You're supposed to be using your creative self-expression. You're supposed to be using like acting. I, I know your actor, actors come out of this nakshatra. Um, people that can mimic things and people that are just funny, like maybe even a stand-up comedian, just to be in the limelight, okay? And you, there's a, something in you that wants it too, but then there's something in it that's like, no, I don't really want that. You know, it's that K2 saying, no, you don't want that. It's like these little demons on your arms that do this, right? Yeah. Or make you, it will make you very shy or insecure about it now not now but especially when you're growing up um it when you're younger you're like lost as hell I, I was at least i didn't know what the hell i wanted somebody told me to do this that's what i was doing somebody tells you to do that you're like oh okay i'll give it a shot right yeah <laughs> and so you're like and then you you just go through everything and finally you're like okay what who am i that's a lot of times you'll think like what is going on with me who am i like what am i supposed to be doing i mean that's what it really boils down to yeah very much so like i was the class clown even in school you know like you, you are yeah they voted me that like every year <laughs> yeah <laughs> things like right because you're supposed to be in like you were supposed to people are attracted to leos i mean they they're the life of the party and there's a part of you that has that and then there's a part of you that doesn't want that either it's like this it's really conflicted because that's the pro the problem. It's Conflict conflicted. describes me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there. Well, also speaking of that, if you want to go, we'll, we can start there on that too. It also can make you get really pissed off. I mean, where you get so mad that you might shake, <laughs> right? You get so mad and you're just like, you'll think of things that you just know you shouldn't be thinking about, <laughs> right? Yeah. And right. then it can go away, you know, it also can go away, but I once sometimes, yeah. And that's, that's also cause you have Rahu in the eighth and that can be kind of tough. Um, but so you have to learn that anytime you do the best thing for you to do, I've noticed too, you know, I've, I meet a lot of people with K2 moon together and the worst thing for them to do is if you ever get told to take like antidepressant depression pills, don't take them. No, I think they can be like, the worst thing for somebody that has K2 and Moon conjunct because it completely reverses it. I've just noticed that. Donald Trump has this though too. So you got to understand 
you're always going to be looking for something next, like, or what's mm -hmm. something different. You know, you're never going to, you're always going to feel like unsatisfied emotionally in a way. Yeah. Like a rolling stone. Sometimes I, all right. So if I sit at my house for too long or I'm in one spot mm -hmm. for too long or doing one thing for too long, it's like, all right, I got to do something else. Like, I feel like I have to have more purpose or move more or go, you know, let's do this now. Let's do that now. Let's go here now. And right. it's really hard for me to sit still uh, and do one yeah. thing for too long. Right. Well, then when you have K2 in the second, it also can make you, when you're like, when you're mad, you could say some crazy shit. I guarantee you. Right. Very much so. You're yeah. like, like you can make somebody feel like this big when you needed to. Yeah. I don't like doing it, but if you needed to, you could. <laughs> Curse, yes, very yeah. much. All right, so that's your second house because your second house is your speech and also um, your throat, you know, this. So you might <clears throat> have throat things to happen. You got to be careful with that um, because when you have K2 there, also. Fifth shot, like, is that what you're saying? or? Yeah, and just like how things, like maybe you'll get like swollen glands or stuff. You just get in with the moon. Some, I need to have quit. like throat things going on. I need to quit K2 smoke. Also is a, K2 also um, is smoke. So a lot of people that have K2 in these houses, they tend to, you know, they tend to smoke because it's just what happens. So I've been trying uh, to kick it. I have honestly, yeah. I've been doing a good effort. I have. So I thought I had it beat, but uh, I tried to quit at the same time as my girlfriend. And it just, it, my anger issues kind of amplified at that time. Right. Yeah. Um, you're, and then I wrote down a ton of notes, but I wrote, so that's what I would just say, but I'll write you what I wrote too. The first Lord goes into your second house. You have to look where the first Lord, each sign has a Lord, right? The ruler of your first house goes into the second house. So your whole focus is on here too, money. There's some sort of money, like you might worry about money a lot too. I've noticed that people with, with planets in Barini, there's a restraint, there's a restriction. They always worry about money. They always worry about finances. And you have that like a double emphasize because, and you'll probably might even spend money too. You don't even care about money, but you're always going to like worry about money. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I know this is, it's hard to explain, but that's, no, that's you, what it is. <laughs> no, it's not hard to explain at all. Yeah. You know, right. that's how like, that's how crazy this is. It's, but because you have a detached thing to it. You know, money doesn't mean shit, right? But you'll, you'll get it and you're like, oh, this is great. And then you have it and then you might just spend it all. Then you're like, oh shit, what did I just do, right? Yeah, it's still driving factor of our society. So yes, we worry about it, but I'm very much detached to the aspect right. of, you know, yeah. Right. People's worth being involved with it. So also there, there's also an attachment to the family, to the mother you know, to the, like I said, I think I might've said this earlier, but, um, definitely some, there's some things going on. Anytime K2 sits in a house, he destroys it. So growing up, I'm sure you had some family problems, maybe financially, but you know, maybe with your mother, your mother probably had to take on a hard role. I think your mother also, you know, she, now she could have had, she could have had a lot of problems. I see from your chart that she had a lot of problems, right? Like, she had to deal with a lot of external influences and a lot of problems, like possibly um, just financially too. So maybe it was a struggle for her. And then, you know, so you, I'm sure you do still feel and, you know, you love her and everything, but there's some sort of void of wherever K2 sits with the moon, it's going to give you this weird void of whatever's, you know, it's sitting with. So possibly of a motherly feeling or that mother feeling that, you, you know, it's just a void. You still yeah. could like her, but it's almost like a friend, you know? It's not that mother feeling. Yeah, we we had a rough childhood, and I had a rough childhood growing up, and mom did have to take on a major role that she wasn't ready for, and I often blamed her for our mm -hmm. situations and things like that. But yeah, um, I kind yeah. of had a relationship with my mother for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then... Also, I wrote you're a truth seeker, seeker because you're ruled by Venus. Like Venus is one, of, is one of your significators in your chart. When you see here, this AK, that's these karkas. And your AK karka for significator in your entire chart is Venus. 
So you are transformed through relationships and you become like a better person probably through women in relationships. You might also have a lot of women friends, which can cause some problems in your relationships because, you know, you might have women friends and, you know, just, it's like, they, you know how women are. I mean, yeah. it's just is what it is, but that could be something relationships have really changed your life and <laughs> modified you to, you had probably, you probably went through some issues too with relationships. I'm not, you know, I'm sure you, there were some, some problems there too, right? Very much, yeah. You uh, you couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> did, I'm curious. Did did anybody ever stalk you? Uh, yeah, I had some followers, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, because you have like you have that for sure. So, and Rigashira is the nakshatra of being like it's the deer, okay? And that's but they one of the tendencies of that is stalking. Like they could be stalked or stalk somebody, but. They're also always searching. So for you, you're always searching, like trying to figure things out, figuring out, you know. So there is a big money influence thing going on, but you're probably very artistic as well, very creative, very, yeah. um, and that's the side of you. And actually, I gotta, I gotta go revert to the back to the moon. The nakshatra of your moon, this Purva Falguni, it is all about create, like creating through knowledge, okay? To obtain knowledge, to build something. You want to, but it's all, it's like a dark side of creation. Like if you were an artist, you're going to be drawing like crazy, you know, pictures of just not even just drawing you. It's like the dark side of art. Right. And you want to perfect it. I've actually drawn a lot of really like a bunch of skulls and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> done my own tattoos and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So, and you'll have that, like you'll definitely have that dark side of you but it's, it's like this dark craft of, and you want to perfect it. And it's, you know, it's like, you're, that's, you're all about that. That's how you think. And that's where you actually, um, become the most creative. And, you know, I don't, I will, there's so many things you could do, but whatever you do for your real job, it's probably like, you know, your creativity, you need to be using your creativity period. So you'll probably have more than one job because I've noticed people that have, I have a lot of the same planets in these nakshatras and you'll have a ton of jobs. Like you'll, you know, you'll be, you'll do the bartending thing. You'll do the, you know, you'll be in the food business and you might do, you might be a construction manager. You also could be um, an engineer. There's so technology stuff. There's so many things like that pop out to me in your chart of what you do, but um, you're, you might even, this is going to sound, this is crazy, but you might deal with death and deal with people that die. Do you deal with people that die at all ever? No, I've been I've been in the construction business for a okay. while, and I've done um, just a little bit of like cybersecurity, like hooking up cameras and uh, watching cameras and trying to prevent theft and stuff like that for uh, well, local business. Yeah. Okay, so your your second lord, the rule, what you value and stuff. You value honestly though power and authority. So it's very hard for you to not be a manager or be in charge. Yeah. You know, I in a workforce. I say, I, yeah. I feel, yeah. Uh, I work for myself for most, for the most part. Um, Good. You should be. Cause, yeah. yeah. I, You're very competitive too. Very. And I mean, where that's where the authority thing, once you have something and it's yours, you want it to be the best. And it's like this competitive nature that you have that you value that too. And you actually, you want, to be in relationships with people that are competitive. Like I'm sure your your girlfriend is like she's she's no bull, like bullshit. She's like boom boom boom, you know? Mm. In a way she's like disciplined. Is she older than you? No, we're actually about the same age, really really close together actually. Uh I forget really? how many, Yeah, for forget how Have many. Have you ever dated anybody older than you? Yeah, not much older than. I was just it wasn't like any really significant like real older you know big age too crazy right but uh um, yeah, i was i forgot what i was just she mature say. though she probably acts yeah. older more mature than i am she definitely. grew up fast probably more way more mature than i am when it comes to most aspects <laughs> wanting okay. to settle down and all that for sure okay good so um i read you have now what if, do you have siblings no i'm an only child actually so 
your, I wrote, fame will come through using creative self-expression, speakers, actors, transformative relationship with now, if you had siblings, but I can see why you wouldn't have siblings because you really don't have anything in the third house. So yeah. it's kind of always a, you know, that's why I always kind of ask, but you need to have, you need to be in management. I wrote, I wrote construction may work for, with your intellect, maybe do something with communication, but transportation as well. So, you know, I'm sure you can drive machines and all that stuff, or maybe, you know, you do I'm just good with your hands. You yeah. might be good with your hands. Very good with my hands. I'm actually, I'm a, that's like, I, I like, enjoy working and creating. And mm -hmm. it's, that's my big thing. I like to, I don't know. I was always kind of into the, the dynastic Egyptians and like how they just, how perfect everything was in there. Just everything they did, did and left behind and the polarity left behind and everything. And just how, yeah. And just, yeah. So I kind of like that whole aspect of creating, leaving something behind. Right. Gives me um, but I wrote, may work with your intellect, blah, blah, blah. writing short distance travel, TV, internet business. Like you, you need to always do this YouTube thing and you always need to be doing something like this because this is kind of like your life purpose in a way, you know I mean? Like you eventually that, you know, this might be the only thing you do, you know, just this is what you're supposed to be doing for sure. Just because, and it's, it's, K2 will be happier there. Your moon will be happier there. You'll be happier when you're investigating and researching. Yeah. Because you need to be, you're, you need to be a detective, you know, in a way. Detecting yeah. whatever you want to detect, but detecting something. Yeah, I believe we're all led to, uh, you know, certain puzzle pieces. And I'm definitely good at putting these puzzle pieces together. And I definitely had a good gift with that. That's why the channel, it's, it's if you watch the, there's like no negativity ever. Everybody's always so positive and thanking and things like that. So it's almost, we find each other, you know, and if you're genuinely interested, because it's not, I'm not selling any propaganda or right. seeing an opinion on anybody. It's like people literally come find help, interest. And, you know, I, I don't claim ownership of any work or any books I read. I give people references, things like that. And I think people enjoy that honesty, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I agree because, you know, I think that, the more you can relate with people too. I mean, that's, it's, it's so true. I think that having nice viewers is a nice, even clients, period. I'd rather have nice people, like less nice people <laughs> than a million haters because, you know, it just becomes, it can become emotionally draining and make you not like it. Yeah. Like if you have too much drama on your channel or something like that, that won't be healthy for this moon and K2 together. You know, like it yeah. just, it's just won't be. So it's, and do you see how that's working out? Like the more you do stuff like that and the more you do things, it's going to work out because you're supposed to be doing that. Yeah. So you have to be doing things that K2 likes to do. And yeah, it's, it's like one. I like that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Once it's, if I don't resist where I'm being led, life goes easier. And yes. for some reason I've been led to, you know, share thoughts and things like this. So. Yeah. It's almost like I get a stress at times. And, and then once I, get it off my chest and make the video hit record and even just send it out there. I'm good. Even if nobody watches the thing, I'm, I'm I, it's like, it's, I know it's like a, it's almost your own therapy session. Cause you don't need to see a shrink. Any therapist you'll see will just probably irritate you. Yeah. Cause you probably know more than them. <laughs> yeah. About myself right. at least for sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. About yourself. So, um, your fourth Lord, which is the mother, your home life and everything. That, that goes into the 11th. So, you know, there could be some sort of dramatic transformations through Venus and romance, art, artistic, um, hospitality, and making things better looking too. So, and you know what? I could see where you would do construction. Maybe, I, maybe it is build. Do you do buildings? What do you do with, or is it more home? Um, we do like, right now I'm just building apartments and restoring a building. I'm like, so. Got wait, it. Till you, wait till you hear what that is. Your ascendant is all about like renewing. So it's all about restoring, renewing, redoing, renovating, all, all about that. And, and making something look prettier, right? And like fixing shit. That's, that's your... Bringing the beauty. Um, yeah. Bringing the beauty after the storm. Okay. That's what it's all. Bringing the, like you could take something that absolutely looks like trash and make it look beautiful and that's what you like doing yeah 
Okay, so um, happiness comes from, well, what else did I write here? Do you like cars? Yeah, a little bit. I've never been a real big. Not too big. Like, I didn't, I didn't think so. Yeah. I enjoy them, but I don't like, I'm not like a. You're not like a car person. No, nah, not one of the big motorheads or anything. Mm hmm Then I wrote just, there's a lot of female circles in your groups. Like, there's a lot of females. You're going to probably deal with a lot of females. Um, you'll be transformed through females. I wrote developing property. Um, the fifth Lord is your creative self-expression. It comes through, um, you might have, you're not like books. I wouldn't say you were probably the best student, but you are 100% business smart, street smart. Like you just know how to do things. You know how to like maneuver things. I mean, it, your Mars is very strong with that. And it's really important for you. Um, you love competition. <laughs> yeah. You're fifth floor. So, I mean, you want the best stuff and you're comp you're very competitive, even though you're like, you sit there and you're laid back, but you don't, you want to be, you want to be like, you want to have the best stuff. Yeah. Like you're even your job and your career and your creativity, anything that you create, you want it to be the best. Strive for yeah. Betterness and just, yeah, totally. I've always been competitive and wanted to be number one or, you know, yeah. So I've, yeah. A curse and a gift, as I said. <laughs> I, but then you'll get it, and then you're like, oh, okay, right? <laughs> like, uh, oh, that, was, that was nothing, right? I'm not that good. You there. just weren't trying that hard. <laughs> right. I'm not that good. You just weren't trying hard. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of humble at the same time when I, when I do. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's funny. You'll, and I also wrote you want to fight for the masses. So you also want to help unprivileged people. There's a lot of that going on in your chart, too. Um, small animals, you love animals, I'm sure, which I just asked you that earlier. Uh, you also might have fights at work, or you might have some issues with enemies at work, or issues with work, or you deal with problems at work, but it, since I know that you're in the construction, I mean, that's, your day-to-day -day work is, like, just, you're dealing with a lot of, it's like, work, you're working, like, with your hands, physically, I'm sure, and you're doing all the work. It's a battle every day. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but you would make a great teacher. So, you know, anything you teach, you probably always had this teaching thing maybe in your head. Yeah, that's, it's weird as like, you ever, it's like a job that you didn't choose mm -hmm. for yourself. Like I said, I want to be an astronaut, but it's like, yeah. teacher, that's lame. I don't, but the more I think about it, that's the more I'm uh, gifted towards that. Outcome. Because you are, you are all about learning knowledge and learning things. And um, you find you really 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 respect like knowledge any kind of knowledge yeah philosophy um i'll get to that with the nikshatras because this is just kind of like your chart um great motivator you'd also be a great life coach <laughs> yeah. so great coach even a coach like a great project manager like you even when you're out on the scenes like you're just you're really like positive and you're good at motivating people and helping them see the light in a way right? yeah yeah, uh, I, I actually, I, everybody, like, uh, kind of Dr. Phil, all my friends, anytime anybody's going through a hard part or a hard mm -hmm. time, I can relate. I have empathy. I tell them, you know, hey, or I can show them, a, like, hey, this is how bad it was for you. But look, it was 10 times worse for me. Look, you know, and then give them examples and make them actually feel better a lot of times. I feel my struggle is kind of my gift because I can relate with so many people that have been through so many walks of life because I've had so many you know cards thrown at me i guess you could say and yeah. i've kept rolling with the punches and i've kept that positivity and you know i kept achieving and bettering myself through it so right well and in your mars in the seventh house others you know the masses you're you're a great listener sravana your mars is in this nakshatra of sravana it's the ear listener so people are going to always tell you things you're that you're like a counselor i mean you're, you're going to be a counselor whether you want to be a counselor or not. So you have a ton of things for astrology, you know, obviously. But um, anything metaphysical, studies, that kind of stuff, I mean, that's just like a natural for you. Just, yeah. It's easy. You're good at explaining things. You're good at guiding people through things, telling them good advice. Um, what else? Oh, I wrote... 
another thing that you're not even worried about the money with that part. It's also, you just want to, you actually want to help people that are unprivileged or people that are, you don't want to help um, people that have, you know, that are powerful. You don't want to like give them more knowledge. It's more helping people that, you know, that are in issue, that are having problems that are unprivileged that are, you know, not in a good spot. It's, you know, you're helping almost like the, yeah, I always better. had this, I guess, utopian fantasy of uh, kind of giving the land back to the people who own it and run it and take care of it. And, you know, the mm -hmm. ones that are out here that are participating in society, not the ones sitting in their ivory tower, I guess you could say. Right. Calling the shots. So, yeah, revolution is a big, <laughs> a big thing for me. Right. Well, and then your seventh Lord goes into the... Okay, so all I'm saying is you might date, I wrote down you might date somebody older, but you're going to date somebody that loves animals, that's a fighter, that's independent, that's um, probably had a rough child, could have had a rough childhood or some, had a, some past deep-rooted issues because you're, a lot of your spouse and relationships go into this nakshatra of Mula, and Mula is somebody that didn't have the most easy past and didn't have, you know, like had a lot of trials and a lot of past life, a lot of past, you know, when they were growing up baggage. So, you know, you're probably there, but they're strong. They're not weak. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know, it's not somebody that's you, you want somebody that's strong. Like you want, you need to be with somebody that's like independent. That's more, um, I'd say more dominant than not. That is, you know, really just put, that goes to work and doesn't really, isn't so needy, you know? Yeah, very much. So very then you've got Rahu and your ape, and you could see ghosts. Like, you could be very psychic, very intuitive. Um, I don't want to say you see ghosts, but you might have seen a, a few ghosts here and there. Uh, I've actually had a lot of paranormal experiences <laughs> and stuff. I don't really go too much, yeah. but um, I actually accept and read emails and help people through that stuff through a couple of the experiences I've had. Um, things like that. I've actually met a lot of people with similar experiences. It's really, it's kind of been a phenomenon uh, with the stuff that uh, you, people, it's always the same thing, man. It's always the same story and it's really kind of odd. But yeah, sometimes I see, um, I guess you could say, uh, see things that others may not, see colors in the sky that others can't see and like auras and things mm -hmm. like that. It's really weird. You're so, very, intu I mean, you're very intuitive, not to mention with a psychic, not intuitive. Like you just know things that are going to happen. Like you're just with the moon and K2 together. That's like psychic city. Then Rahu and the eight. That's another very intuitive thing. And it's in the nakshatra of Prova Bhattapadra, which is like the, the darker side, I would say. And so now with that nakshatra too, I've noticed people like tattoos, they're rebellious, they like to do things different. Um, they're artists, music, musicians, like your chart is also for music and for um, just beats and drop, more like, you know, just, in, you might like the beats, <laughs> you know, it's not like you're gonna sit there and have, it's not like you're gonna, I don't know, you might like all music, but you have a lot of music things going on in your chart. Yeah, very much. I'm, uh... I'm very much into like independent art too. Like I don't just like mainstream stuff. I have to find that, that hidden gem, you know, I, I always have to share yeah. and find that new or even old, just not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like you would probably like also Indian music like me with the old, Yeah. you know, just those old instruments that it's more spiritual and stuff. Yeah. You also really might be drawn to foreign cultures, foreign lands, foreign people, foreign yeah, because we have a lack of culture here, and everyone right. has the culture. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I know. I, it's, it's, it's so true. Yeah. Um, now, you've got Sun, Jupiter, and Mercury all together in the 10th house. Anytime this, the Sun is with other planets, it can bust things, right? So it, it doesn't really like to be with other planets. So Jupiter, your Sun is so strong in your chart, but it's also one of the the problems in your chart. I mean, I look at this, this Shadbala, this strength, that's what this is called, Shadbala, is down here, right? I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody's str sun so strong. 650 points, that's like through the roof. But 
A, it's sitting with Jupiter and Mercury. It makes you really just, you're just so good with wisdom and you're such a good, that's why I say like all this coaching stuff and all this teaching stuff, like you need to be doing that stuff. You need to be in charge because if you're not, that sun is going to get really mad because he's going to get, you know, a lot of planets in Barini can get jealous and they just, they can have this weird, they just want to be, they, they want it to be their way in a way. <laughs> so now also there can be <clears throat> father issues separated from the father. I mean, just the 10th house, you ha do have some restraint there too. So Barini is the, the nakshatra of restraint. It's just, it's like you're bearing a lot of work. You take on a lot of stuff. So it's just a lot of, um, it's like a woman that's giving birth in a way, you know, she's in pain, she's bearing, childbearing, um, but they're great healers. They're, they always want to help. They know about death. They have a understanding of death that nobody else does. So <clears throat> astrologers, anybody that wants to do anything metaphysical, you're with like everything. You're just so drawn. You're so, your life is so geared that way. That's yeah. You will always do that. That's yeah. That's the kind of my my mind state. It always makes me uh, wonder who the hell I was in the past life. You know what I mean? Things like that. I wonder about those kind of things. Anyways, um, always drawn to, you know, explaining consciousness and essentially just trying to give people even like a scientific left brain or, you know, trying to aspect to like right brain teachings and things. You know, like a a scientific way at looking at the creative feminine aspects of the world. You know, I try to bring both and I think I'm good at relaying those messages too, you know, but well, it also tant like that tantric stuff, tantric, you like you'd be a good tantric master. Okay. Anything like that. Um, because a lot of like sex things going on too in your chart. So very, um, where, you know, Rahu and the ape can make somebody like a sex addict or make somebody just addicted to, but it also makes you addicted to um, the secrets of the world, right? It's, it just, there's so many different things, but you're going to dabble in them all. Like you're, you're, you just become obsessed with like the secrets, any eighth house stuff, death, death and rebirth, CIA, FBI investigator, it's Scorpio. So you think anything Scorpio stuff, that's transformation. You're going to just be just really good at that. And, you know, just connecting with that. Yeah. So it's very important. Your eighth house is like a really important house in your chart. So the more you do things and you just have to, I would say, just make sure you don't. You're going to balance things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you, so Port of Asu is the nakshatra of your ascendant. And I wrote, um, to obtain higher knowledge, to make something new after dis destruction. Um, your impact, you want to build something new to guide people. It can be sudden sudden ups and downs a lot with this nakshatra. This is your ascendant. So this is, this is like details of the nakshatra. You could be a good boxer, like, because you're quick like that. You might be interested in boxing. Yeah, we actually, I used to box a lot when I was younger. Did you? Yeah. yeah. You could be cold. Um, cold sometimes, but here's the thing: you you can bounce back limit limitlessly. So no matter what, it's all it's the star of bouncing back and renewal. So you could get thrown, you could get everything ripped out from under you. You can bounce back. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's a gift. Yeah. You might not. You might always think like, oh God, it might cause you a lot of stress. Obviously, it's yeah. not fun, right? But you, you have to understand you always have this like bounce back thing where you, the more you help people, the better it is for you. And you probably know that. Yeah. The, the better I feel, the better I, well, like I said, that ability to bounce back is how I can help people sometimes. I'm kind of like, right. proof, if that, if that makes sense. Cause mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people that have been through with me and through my struggles and stuff have been a kind of a source for, of inspiration for maybe weaker people, you could say. Right. So, yeah. Um, deeply into philosophy, inspirational, spiritual, with a genuine understanding of hardships, return and renewal. If they give back their prosperity doubles, I just said that, can be 
courageous that your, your intellect is like off the charts where you understand things. Um, this next chakra is all about, it's the star of, it's like the brilliant one is what they call it. So you have a connection to the cosmos. And just like you said, this is that nakshatra. This is why I say in all of my videos, Donald Trump guarantee you he sees an astrologer. That's why the first, one of the first things he wanted to do was meet um, the Tesla guy and send him in. You know, he just, he wants to know all about that too. Yeah. So he's got a lot of planets in the, this and he's, his um, Saturn and Venus is in that. It's really important to him. He, he might not act like that. He also has K2 and moon like you. It's kind of funny. You have um, a couple of similar things to him. But it's just, uh, you have that divine connection of understanding stars too. Just like how you noticed that the, the sidereal way was the right way and you just figured it out on your own, right? I mean, that's not normal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I, the weird thing was is I, I seen it like a clock that was uh, going through daylight savings time that wasn't changed, right? And that's exact. once I seen, because I see these big cycles. And I mean, I could sit there and list you off numbers and exact degrees and everything. And I mean, it's boring to most people. But once you understand that, it's just like how people understand their 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour and so on. People understand that, but there's a greater cosmic scale. And once your clock in your mind gets a little bit bigger geared towards those charts, I guess, you start seeing these and understanding this stuff a lot, a lot more. And once I could actually see that, I was like, wow. And I was like, I bet you I can, you know, do classical readings based on other people's work, like uh, just placements of the charts, right? Like say, all right, the natal chart, you got this in this house and it means this. I was just reading, you know, what, what I could find from old astrology books and things like that. Yeah, you would be so great at doing the research to, I don't really, honestly, a lot of my, I know the basics. I use the basics a lot. Like I know a lot of mine is kind of, I I have to talk to somebody to do readings. I mean, because then I know which way things are going. Because yeah. you know, a lot of planets, there's divisional chart. You see, there's so many charts here. Yeah. There's charts within charts. These are, D9 is the Navamsha chart. That's the chart you turn into. It's also the chart of your spouse and how that your marriage is going to be. You have a D2 chart. There's a, well, this is your wealth chart, right? And these are all points calculations. And D4 is conveniences, your things you're going to have over your savings account, right? You'll have um, a D3 chart. It breaks down each house. Mm -hmm. So there's charts within charts. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. D10 is your career. So this is what it, all this does. I mean, I use it, but I'm, I, I mean, this is like, that's why I asked people kind of at the beginning what they want their readings to be like, do they have specific topics? Because there's so many specific things on here. Well, when people that I had a couple of people ask for readings and I'm, I'm going to um, actually get email them and contact them back. But um, they had specific questions about maybe uh, things like, um, like their soul and their past life, their future, where they're going, energy, or, you know, things like that. Uh, kind of like their purpose, what they should be doing, things like that. And they, they just had specifics that they wanted to know. But uh, like mm -hmm. I, as you're talking to me, it's, it's, it's making a lot of sense and you're hitting the nail right on the head. So there's so much to go into. I could see how this could be overwhelming. Yeah. Do you see how it could go like... <laughs> because this is just talking about your chart right and your like your then we can go into this and go to this is your transits real time what's going on in your life right so Rahu in the second you've got Jupiter in the third so Rahu in the second gives you maybe some you could have had some gains and some sudden fame sudden you know you definitely become more in the public here right but you can have some financial things pop in right now especially because you're out and maybe some things with the mother right now too, because you have Rahu, you're having this natal return on your, your second house and it's hitting K2. So it's definitely a how this is a transformation city going on. Do you, are you having a lot of transformation in your life? Yeah. I've been uh, doing a lot of, I guess you could say emotional and spiritual transformation. I could yeah. I'm trying to learn how to uh, live a little bit, better you know balanced like i said more balanced i'm not right. 
and I've been trying to teach that and practice what I preach because I'm really good at saying it, but not always. Yeah, me too. I'm so great at telling people advice, but I suck at taking my own advice. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I really am. I'm trying to find my way. And I'm, now also, you're, you, you know what? You definitely, so I, your relationship house is a lot of the sixth house because how the Lords go, seventh Lord go. Saturn just went into that, that house. You're having a Saturn return too. Saturn return. Do you know the, how fun those are? But yours, luckily you get to know that it's your Saturn return, right? So I think yours is going to be really a lot of just getting more discipline. Your daily routine is going to change a lot. You're going to start seeing that. You also might want to, you might start focusing on like your day-to-day -day routine, maybe your health, maybe um, it could be for sure your relationship. This is when you might end up to settle. You might decide to settle down and you know get married engaged because you're this is going to happen for two years and now it's backing up it's going into the back into scorpio which it's it was in your fifth and then it's going back into your sixth and it's going to be there for two years so you'll be focusing a lot and you'll be you know really transforming that sixth house and it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy it's not gonna happen overnight it's, but you seem like a pretty saturnized person when you have Saturn in your sixth house anyway, you it actually ends up being really good. It gives you longevity. It makes you able to fight diseases. It, it, it's really good for health. Um, but it's just, there's going to just constantly be something maybe going on, you know, just like just riffraff. <laughs> you know, it's just, you always have pro like things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a way. But it, I mean, it could be worse, you know, you gotta look at it like that. I can completely relate to that for sure. <laughs> yeah, just like always something, and it can be debts, just, you know, it might, might be like debts, just you always feel like you have, you'll, your bills could go up, your expenses might, you might have more expenses at work where machines might break, you might have to buy more tools, you know, just stuff like that. You might spend more money on um, things like that, nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. There's always a the struggle's real, as they say. <laughs> it's constant. It's it's always been a battle for me. That's always what I wondered if I had it, if I had I had a real plentiful past life or something. And now I got to learn some more material lessons, maybe. No. You have to be. I'm just this. I always have to give my little caution thing though. But you do have to be careful with accidents for a couple reasons. The eighth house is accidents. And, you know, sudden accidents, sudden problems, like just trans a lot of transformation, you know, death and rebirth, but it can be like big change. So you have to be careful when you have, um, well, A, you have K2 in the eighth house. That's going to go and move out of the eighth and the change. It's going into your seventh, but you're in a Rahu Dasha. So these Dashas are very important. Like your Rahu Dasha is, you're definitely, you got to be really careful in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Are you act? Do you feel like you're accident prone? Uh, sometimes I my mind gets ahead of my body, but that's that's because of I got so much going on up here that I can um, not keep my mind on where I am and what I'm doing. But I'm very, very, very controlled and careful when I am in my physical body. If that makes sense, when I am when I am focused, I'm very focused. But right. When I'm out there, I'm really out there. So, yeah. Well, I know what Frostburg's like, too. So, there's not too many crazy. It's not like there's car, you know, there's not, not a like ton of traffic everywhere. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's not like you're going to get, you have to just be careful. Like, here's what, here's what I'll tell you what I wouldn't do, okay? I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go paddle boarding in the water without a life jacket. Little thing, you know what I mean? Stupid things like this. It's just. You know, don't don't do anything. Don't climb to the top of a mountain and like step over the edge a little bit too much. <laughs> you know, just don't take like crazy risks if you don't have to. You just have to. Now, it could be an inheritance. It could be. Um, it also could be that because Rahu's in your eighth. It can be sudden gains. So you could have an inheritance, or you could have. Um, it's other people's money or investing or, you know, maybe you do make some slick investments. That could be something you do. Um, 
but it's like sudden. It's not, it's something you completely unexpected. So when you have those nodes in the Rahu and Ketu in the second and eighth, it can be like a lot of struggle with finances. And then you could like, you could hit the, you could even win a scratch off and then be like, what the hell? Like yeah. Game changer. You know, you do have that in your chart. That'd be cool. <laughs> But don't go and spend all money on lottery tickets and think you're going to win. No, I wouldn't do that anyways. No, I, <laughs> right? I don't even really play the lottery. I, I, just because I, I just, I don't know. I gave up on that whole, when I was younger, I always thought like, oh, I'll get rich quick somehow. I'll just be famous or something. Blam, it'll be easy. And I kind of gave up on all those um, kind of false pipe dreams, you know. Yeah. More. You're going to probably like uncover something. I think that's going to make you, you know, like, I think that's what it's going to be. You're going to, you're going to find something that nobody else, like you might, I don't know. You might find, I mean, you're, if you're in construction, you might find some type of, well, this sounds crazy, but say you find like some coin that's been in, just look around for stuff like this too, because it could be like this random inheritance that, you know, that you find and you dig up and it just, you know, yeah. like the, the diamond in the rough type of thing. Yeah. So that's kind of your chart in a way, you know, this is the basics of it. And I mean, obviously if you want to get into specifics later, we, I can go, if you have like real questions, I can go through it, but you can see, I mean, if you want to know if it's a good day to do <clears throat> like, This is your heart side, it's called. So this tells you if it's a good time to do things. You know, if you wanted to start a business or launch a business, <clears throat> write a book, publish it, you know, you can get the best days, best times, and it's going to work out the best for your specific nakshatras. It's, it's called like Tara and yoga. These are all yogas and all, you hmm. know, Indian stuff from the textbooks. But it actually, I don't go on interviews or anything unless I you know, really make sure this is all aligned right. Now, do I go day by day? No, you know, but there are certain things that are going to make it a lot better. You can go in here and see. That's uh, very interesting. I was wondering about that. Cause I yeah, guess like, I wanted to see if you could give like specific reading is on maybe just like a certain date, you know what I mean? Not even a certain. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. This, this is um, also, you can go to this. This software is the best. Well, you can go to these transits. Am I, say you're, you want to know if you're going to have something that activates something for a career, right? From now until you can put in specific dates. And these are all the different charts. So your wealth, your, so let's just do wealth. Any specific finance, financial things from this date to this date. It takes a minute it's slow because I've got so many charts up here. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's but it will like pinpoint like certain things in certain dates, certain times. And it's pretty precise. It, it's, it is pretty crazy. And I, it never fails. I really been enjoying it. Sometimes when we're uh, compressing video like this, it'll take a second to open up folders and stuff like that. I do know that. But for sure, like it's definitely a tool that, Okay, so what today's the sixteenth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna talk to myself for a second and read this. Mm -hmm. Um so today is like an you know, anytime you'll have something that's gonna trigger something, these are your health like how many houses and if this is activating something in a specific sign specific house so it's hitting your seventh house eighth house ninth house fourth house so seventh house can be like business even partnerships and relationships like business partnerships eighth house here this is kind of what i'm thinking in my head right now like today you're talking to me we're doing this and eighth house astrology secret like the metaphysical stuff Ninth house, higher knowledge, like it's activating something in your from your D60 chart. Your D60 chart is the chart of your past life in a way because it's the end all tell all chart. 
Now it changes every 13 seconds. So you better make sure that <laughs> time is right. Right. So it's like, it's so you can't really use it because if they didn't record your time, right, who knows? Right. Yeah. So these are all the different charts. And so anytime it's highlighted in purple, it can be good, you know, for sure. And if it's hitting a money house, second house first even your first house first house second house 11th house so on may 8th that could be a good day for finances for sure um may 9th so definitely some financial thing maybe you make more money on that day or you get a better deal or you know for sure this is stuff that gets activated it's your wealth chart so it does all this yeah that's cool i, I i've seen that it just says uh has like different highlights and different columns kind of it could show you um you know you could kind of play poker with your life a little bit you really could <laughs> but here you, you like so then you look at this as your transits calendar and you can see i mean you're when you have saturn below here because you're hitting this saturn return all these are going to be under the richter scale, scale so it's going to be I'm not, I'm going to say the next two years aren't easy because you're having a Saturn return. So you've got to use them as productive as you possibly can. You know, I wish I would have been told on my Saturn return, it was my Saturn return. I would have made a couple better decisions <laughs> like before. So, you know, just try not, try not to spend money on like, don't, don't go out and spend a ton of money, you know, blow money here and there. If you do get it, because you're, you will regret it. You know, you will, um, it's just, you just have to be cautious, especially it's in the sixth house. So it can be sixth house, eighth house can be accidents. So you really have to be careful. Just you're a little accident prone for the next couple of years. <laughs> so don't worry. I have it in my life all the time. Once I knew that I just realized, okay, I just have to be cautious. So I don't get on roller coasters anymore. I don't do anything that's going <laughs> to, that's going to cause, like, I'm not going to go skiing anymore. You know, just, I'm not going to do things that are going to, possibly break my legs right yeah. so you know that's just it's stupid stuff but it is like i used to break my i broke my arm and leg and stuff when i was younger i was skateboarding i used to skateboard all the time and get this big uh high out of taking risks and stuff and i'd get hurt more than normal people <laughs> yeah so for yeah. sure i could see that it was always during the unneeded i think you know, I never got hurt. It was always hurt, you know, doing something stupid that I didn't need to do. Right. <laughs> right. I want to see one more thing for you. I want to go to your wealth chart. Just to... So I can see here the sun is your one of your strongest planets to make for money income. Sun is, wow, sun moon is phenomenal. Sun Mars is phenomenal. We're going to have a big Sun Mars conjunction this summer too. So you definitely can have some, that's good. Anytime the Sun and Mars are together, the Sun already gives you 650 points of strength, right? And then when Mars goes on top of that, it's even more, you get another 340 points. So that's a very, that's definitely an important planet for you. Yeah, I've, uh, I was when I was reading into it, I seen that my Mars placement, my Aries placement, kind of how they, I guess how it was landing was um, beneficial in the ways that better than it could be. I guess um, you know, I guess some people get bad placements with those things, and I was mm -hmm. more of a benefit. yeah. Your Mars is pretty strong. I mean, it's definitely it is strong, but when it's with conjunct with Mercury, so anytime Mercury goes over it it's going to reverse it. Yeah. Because it's going to, so, cause it's going to make you, you communicate in a harsh way, you know, just, it's going to be more. So that's, that's what all these are. I mean, it's anytime it's red, it's negative. So it's negatively affecting it. If it's blue, it's sleeping. So it's not going to give as much strength. If it's green, it's, po it's positive. Black is good points. And Shadvala is, the strength and it's very you can see it's like extremely extremely so a normal required shadbala for a strong sun is 390 points 
you have 650 points. Yeah. Now, I have to do some more research. This is something I've never seen. So I'm very excited to see what that means because I'll say 2030 is going to be a, one hell of a year for you. <laughs> like that could be, I mean, that's a long time from now, but my God. I'll be like almost 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But hey, I mean, that's when you're going to, who knows what you're going to be doing then, right? Yeah. They might find the fountain of youth by then. So I might look and act the same. Who knows? <laughs> oh my, look at your son, Jupiter. How about this? Sun Jupiter is 1,088 points. It's like a lot of pictures. That's crazy. So then your next strongest planet would be... M Mars is the least of the, sh the strength that you have, to be honest with you. No, it was just the placement of it, um, I'm guessing. was I think it was in a more of a physical aspect, I guess, like mm -hmm. competitive... Yeah. Things like that, maybe my um, right. You know, like how I take care of my body, or I'm competitive. Well, yeah, and you know what? You're that's really good for business too. You don't want to have too strong of a Mars because when you have too strong of a Mars, I've noticed. No, yeah, that's what you know, it can make you. Yeah, yeah, it uh, makes you real. It makes you get so mad, or you know, when people have really strong things, it can just blow it up, or it gets really too intense. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what you find out about the sun being so high like that. Yeah, that's pretty – can't say I have ever seen that. I, I really haven't. And I, that's something you would notice, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, the note sticks out with the numbers there. I, I see that. I'm looking around. Yeah, it's very, very strong. So. so you can see why readings can take a really long time. Oh yeah, and and I understand why they would, um, why they're actually, you know, it would be worth an investment in somebody doing this, you know, and it, it would help teach them more about themselves, let them know more about themselves, and you have to take out the time to do this. And I mean, this stuff is it's ancient lost knowledge. It's literally an art that you're keeping alive. So I appreciate everything that you're doing, and completely encourage you. And I'm gonna continue to help you in any way I can. So just be sure to let me know. If you ever yeah, absolutely. I just, you know, I think it's such a great thing. If it can, if somebody, it can really help. I mean, it, it really can. It helped. It helped me. I spent so much money on readings too. I can't every time, <laughs> every time I would try, I would not hear what I wanted. And this is the problem. When you don't hear what you want, you'll just go get more readings, right? Especially when you're fascinated. And then at one point I, I was like, I got to stop spending money on so many readings. This is insane. Nobody's telling me what I wanted to hear. And I realized that it was me <laughs> and it was, I was the problem. Right. And you know, that you're only going to be told what you're supposed to be told. Right. I mean, and from a specific reading, exactly. I'm not one that sits there and gives predictions. I don't like to give predictions. I think it's, it's almost because it's always a 50 50. You never know. You know, I, I don't have that much faith yet. hundred percent that it, it's right all the time. I mean, I just, I don't, I'm never like that much of a believer. You're kind of like me. I'm sure you're kind of more pessimistic. You know, I, I make predictions and then I hate them when they come true. Cause it makes it <laughs> means that the, you know, the messed up situations in the world are even I'm right. And you know, it just means that the fucked up situations we are in are, are real, you know? Yeah. Cause I've, I've made some pretty basic predictions i made some pretty far out ones there too like even uh like meteors coming in days we'd see meteors and they'd be all over abc news i've done that twice now. i thought that was weird when you said something about intuition because i've actually made videos and said hey you know something about dreams and meteors and things like that and then uh they came so yeah it was really well weird. i made the so i i never do world predictions or world events but i always think them right i always think i know what's going to happen and then then I would never say it. I mean, I just, I'm not that person mm -hmm. because I, I don't like to be wrong about anything. Yeah. It's just how I am. And yes. I did Rex's show and I said, to, I said, you know what, I'll, I'll get a little ballsy here because it was something really popped out to me in that North Korea chart. Yeah. And I said tomorrow, something, <clears throat> two days ago, something could happen, you know, when the day after. But no, it wasn't, and then everybody was like, oh, it's, it's the 15th already, right, when I did the video, because it was the day before. 
Yeah. It got a lot of views, you know, so then it went through, I got to get all the mean comments. And I'm, I'm like, if I make a video with him, I have to sit there and like, I'm on patrol, you know, I have to sit there and I'm like, Oh, and I get so mad. Like I can't, I can't even explain it to you. I get so angry. I don't know why I can't control it. I do too. Luckily I hate typing because if I, if I could just talk, it would be bad and it would get ugly. I, um, <laughs> the same people are like, she's such an airhead. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, those kind of comments piss me off. The airhead comments. Well, it's a, they don't understand. Like, uh, what do you like say? Um, you get on camera, you explain this, do this stuff, or just come up and talk to anybody for, you know, with any amount of content for a couple minutes, you know, they can't do that. But you come up, you can talk for hours upon hours to different people. It's relevant. So you have something to say. So don't let those people, you know, if you said, Hey, let's put you on the spot. Let's get you on the show. You know, he wouldn't be able to talk about anything for not even five. Right. Minutes. And that's what I say. I say, why don't you get a reading? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, why don't you get a reading and see what a crock of shit it really is? And then they're like, oh yeah, right, whatever. They're, but I get so angry, it's so, it's so bad. Anyway, so I said, look, something can happen tomorrow for sure, right? In Rex goes, oh, you, do you think there's gonna be a war? I said, no, not at all. But Trump's gonna be tested, something's gonna happen. I even went to the exact time. So I went to bed and I'm getting all like nervous. Like, I can't believe I did that. Right. People are saying all these crazy comments. I was like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Right. I wake up and then I watch Alex Jones in the morning and he's like, well, looks like Trump scared North Korea, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, that was stupid. I never should have done that. No joke. At five o'clock exactly when I said, like I started pulling the times and said, they were like breaking news. North Korea did attempt uh, a missile strike. It wasn't nuclear. I was like, that was like best case scenario because something did happen. Didn't hurt anybody. But yeah. Donald Trump was tested. I think they shot it down, right? I, I'm sure. And something was that exact time. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. with Trump, man, see, I've been, I was pulling out all this predictive programming. I'm really good at finding all this, uh, these like, subconscious messages i guess that they they program out there for you and i've seen a lot of predictive programming about trump man and for what i understand like i even said i said i know this is gonna sound out there but like i bet you about six months into his presidency there's gonna be an attempt on his life and i i mean because there was really blatant in their symbolism and i mean they were actually given numbers almost like down to like like i said about six months that there was going to be an assassination attempt on his life. And I always was wondering, it's almost like, all right. And when you look at the news, we we've, we've had this war in Syria for about six years. We were blowing up hospitals over there under the Obama administration. We didn't say anything about it. Nobody knew nothing about it. There's just people like me and Rex talking about it. And then all of a sudden it's all over the news. Trump's an asshole. They're trying to, it's because their guy didn't get in. I swear. It's like they, they have these, during the election time, they try to have these pre two determined officials like the Republican and the Democrat, but their guy didn't get in. That's yeah, <laughs> I know. Now they're like, Oh, what do we do? Right? I mean, yeah, they're really them all over the media and just trying to trick people with things like like taking pictures of the, of the inauguration. They like show it like three hours before the inauguration. The thing was just as packed as any other time, it was just camera tricks. A lot of it is just. I, I don't know. I, I, he has, and that, and I, I, like, I know his, his problem, I mean, he's got Mars in his first, like me. I mean, it just, you don't, you, your first thing is to react. It's like reactive. I mean, you can't control it. Okay. And then, so I understand why he sometimes gets so angry and why he is, because I have some similar things to him. You have some similar things to him. So, you know, you can, we can almost, there's only, only so much beaten down you can take before you're like, I mean, how, where he's going to snap too. I mean, he, I mean the, the things, and I don't even know how he does it. I, I, I really don't. He has, I mean, I think he thrives on it. Like, I think the more people test him, all they're doing is making him get more competitive. He, they're making him do better. Yeah, so, I, I do believe that. I think he's a really good businessman. And in the sense of a businessman aspect, meaning he knows how to hire the right people, delegate and get people that are in it for the, the, 
the right reasons, the best at their job, right? You don't become a good businessman from hiring a bunch of assholes that are incompetent. You get right. hire the best at the job. And I think that America needed a, a, almost a businessman president because the nations are corporations now. We don't, this is how things are run. Yeah. He could, he could help benefit us. He could help bring it back to the people and just bring a higher quality about America. Like it should be how we've had it before. It used to be, oh, the work was here. The things were here. Yeah. I mean, everything would last 20, 30 years. You can still have things from your grandma's, but if you go buy something now, or the same thing, it'll only last you a year or two. It's the quality of everything has went down. And, well, and you know, Jenny, my, that Jenny, who I do Moonstone, I do, she's on, I'm doing channels, with, shows with her on my channel too. And we just did a show on Rex's show again. And then she made such a great comment. She goes, Heidi, you know, the United States of America is United States of America, Inc. They, they say Donald Trump, they hired the most experienced possible. It is true. Like when you look at it, they're like, oh, he has no experience. Yeah, he does. He, He's like, I think he's handling it rather, rather well, you know, and it's every show I get on, I have to, I end up talking about him and I, people think I'm probably obsessed with him, but I just, I think he gets so much negativity. I feel like I have to say, you know, I am somewhat supposed to say those things about him because in my opinion, he at least deserves a chance to prove everybody wrong. I mean, and we could be wrong. I could be wrong and that's fine, but he might not do a great job. Who knows? But I don't believe he will. He's not a puppet. And that's how these democracies are. That's how they're pulling over this whole corporation act. If he's not their puppet, then they'll have to do something drastic, literally. I guess. Yeah. And we'll start to see change because they won't like the change. You know what I mean? All right. They even released on CNN um, two different police bureaus and uh, investigative places actually proving that Obama's birth certificate's a fake. So this stuff is actually making mainstream news now because he's, it's like a did regime. Did you see the chart that I did on his birth chart? No, oh I actually didn't. I, I've, I've, I've been watching, getting into it. I just, uh, your channel. So that's one of the shows I did on the leak project. I went in and I said, is Obama's birth certificate real? And I compared them both. Hands down. He was born in Kenya. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, do I think I do. I think he's like, I don't like hold it against him. You know, I mean, it is what it's over and done with. He's not our president anymore. It, but it makes everything he did almost null in, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. in reality. I mean, that would forfeit everything by the rules, everything that was, well, what, what's going to happen. I mean, what are they going to do? You know, I mean, I think that's what people, hopefully if anything, things will just get exposed that how shitty everybody else was so that it takes the focus off of him. Exactly. They need to expose what's going on, this, this corruptness, because yeah. the illusion of choice, this illusion of freedom that they're tricking us all into, once people start waking up from that, we can actually be active parts of this change, you know? Yeah. It's the, the P, every, like I said, everybody knows what they want to do or what's right and what's healthy. We're like one of the only species that's so self-destructive. We, we know that smoking's bad. We know that doing this is bad or eating this is bad. And, we continue to do it, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. We got to break the cycle though. Yeah. And I'll say one thing about you and I, this is like what I'm supposed to tell you. I feel like you and I can be our own worst enemies. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, that's one of our biggest um, hurdles is ourselves. <laughs> right? say, conflict definitely describe we have a lot of inner conflict and, that balancing act of, you know, what do I do here? It's almost like, uh, do I throw lightning bolts at these people or do I turn? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I get that. Just how to like, and you know, it's just how to let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to learn how to let go. So I think, uh, me kind of hitting rock bottom there a couple years back, um, really helped me, you know, give up, like I said, see possessions. Cause when you're growing up, you start to see this, like the social status and you want to have the nice car, the nice money, this, right. that, and it just, it started to change when I started to hit rock bottom, I guess. Like once you lose everything, you're really free to do whatever you want, you know, cause you have no ties. And yeah. from there it just, yeah, it was definitely a lesson I had to learn and I'm still learning. Right. Yeah. Me too. I mean, there's not a day in my life that I am not learning a lesson and especially you and I are so influenced with learning how to have a milk show life and let go that it just really because once you think about it 
I mean, everything we have here is we're not going to have it. Like, right. mine's more focused on relationships. When yours more emotions and probably things and how you think, mine's more like people. <laughs> so you know, I just it's hard because I'm supposed to learn how to have a balanced relationship, but I'm either like all in and then when I'm all in, I'm all out. You know, it's like this extreme, it's always extremes. And then you're, you get a try, you get in relationships with the wrong people that test you. And, you know, and for you, it's more like ever, but we're so controlled. Like everything that happens in our life is influenced with K2. So it's always, we're always being tested. Mm. I mean, it's like, all or nothing. The best thing for us to do is stuff like this and do astrology and do help people because it's making us happy. It's making us not, you know, fall back on other things and, you know, and we're helping improve others' lives. So I think it's like the best case scenario. Yeah. I'm glad I, I'm glad I had you on the show and I'm glad I met you and I'm yeah. definitely going to have you back if you care to. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I love doing these. I love doing them when they're nice, when if the subscribers are nice. Yeah. Well, the, the channel, your subscribers, you said, are nice. That's great. <laughs> yeah, the channel's kind of slow. Everybody hits, watches at different times, but uh, I'm, I'm up some of the videos up to just a couple thousand views or whatever. But like I said, there's no negativity whatsoever. You know? Yeah. You get a couple. And you know, that's, I feel like if you just, if I, when I know if I can help just a few people, if it's five, it's two, I mean, I just know that I'm doing the right thing because I don't need to influence the whole entire world. You, that's not how life goes. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's however you can handle. I mean, that's, yeah, you'll get them. You'll get the amount that you can handle at the time. And at the time, yeah. yeah, as it increases you, your ability to handle more will increase too. So, yep. And people come and go too. So you'll, you, you might help somebody on this journey. The numbers stay, they might still watch your channel and this and that, but you might not have much to give to that specific person you'll be talking to the next one or the new exactly. person. Exactly. Yeah. I have, and but I have like, I actually, I actually got this guy who was my, was my client, I guess you could say, but he had, he was also my mortgage coach. He's also a coach and he's also sent me so many people, but I've met so many people through him, you know, and I've helped him a lot. I know. And so it's just always, you know, it's who you're meeting and who you're, just, I'm, it's so it's so crazy but I mean the things that you can learn from this and the health even just like health and stuff for people a lot of people have like okay what's going on with my health and I you know that's 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 hard that takes a lot of like looking at everything so you don't tell somebody the wrong thing yeah um, but you got to really do a lot of analyzing with the health stuff so well you the you're a genuine person let's see when I uh... <sighs> See, some people can be kind of deceived by like, you know, a pretty face and a fast talking person, you know, they'll be, oh, this is, this is all bullshit. This is, uh, this is just something like, oh, they're, they're, you know, they're just trying to make money off of me or whatever. They think it's a scam. It's not, it's you. I, I can honestly tell you're a genuine person. You, this is in your heart. This is what you want to do. And yes, of course you want to benefit off of it anyways. Who wouldn't want, I mean, you're investing a lot of time, a lot of energy that's the way of the world. You have to get something in return for this, but um, I can tell that you're really genuine and you wouldn't want to mislead people. You wouldn't want to just feed them full of bullshit or tell them what they want to hear. If that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I wish I could do that. Right. It would be, I would be easier to, but no, I could never do that. That's if anything, I think my readings can be too like, you know, just, it's, it's, you're going to get the truth. Now you're going to also get all the positive things about yourself and you're going to hear all your, you know, but there's only so much I can, I'm going to tell you anyway. There's, you know, you're, you just have to be careful because it's your own karma in a way too. You don't want to say too much and have some, and have somebody worry about it so bad where they, <laughs> where they end up like, like me where I, now I'm doing this, but I guess, you know, however you're supposed to, this is what I love doing, but I mean, I do have a full time, you know, other job. So it's just, my time is kind of limited for this, but I was doing readings for like when I did the first show, I was doing like 20 readings a day for free. And I didn't even know what day it was. And I couldn't do it. And I mean, like I had, I had to stop. Yeah. But you paid your dues. So see, you, you did it, you tested it, you felt better about it. And now you realize, Hey, this is an investment. I'm investing time, energy, 
and all this into it. And I know it's real. So if I, you know, people want to pay, they want to donate, whatever, then I'll do it. But you can't, you can't burn yourself out on that either. You can't, you know, they have to be willing to help themselves and they have to be willing to reimburse people for their time. And which most people that are wanting their star charts and things like that done, they're already uh, willing to pay and seeking the help. They're actively seeking it. So yeah. It's way better than going to a psychologist, I think, or like a therapist. Yeah, it's just, it's very much. I needed this talk today too. Like the, the, the <laughs> right? time it was so perfect. So uh, I really do. I appreciate your time. Sure. And everything you said. All right. Well, I'm gonna hit the stop recording. Okay. All right. uh, so yeah, I'll have you back on. All right. I just had to stop recording from my end because I'm not a good editor. I don't even know. Like I barely know how to use these tools. So. Oh. I'm sure you can do all the editing, but on my side, I have to make it easy to just trim. <laughs> right. yep.